what's up everybody welcome back to exotic astrology again and today we will continue our discussion on the bhagavad gita series and today we will discuss on one of the negative characters who is very famous for his misdeeds and his controversies and his scandals and his schemes and we will see why is this person at all existing in the pages of the mahabharat which is very instrumental for us in learning the wisdom of the gita yes there you go today's topic is lessons from duryodhana yes 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 we will discuss why it is very important to understand this character all right if you are new to the channel and you have not yet subscribed then please subscribe to it and if you like this video click the thumbs up and share it with others who want to know how to learn the lessons from duryodhana also yes and yes if you want a personal consultation then please approach me through my website in the link below and some of you had been telling me that the link is not opening there was some problem yes i figured it out now hopefully it is working if it is still not working then please let me know okay and before i begin as i always say god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him and he will help you to learn the lessons which duryodhana wants us to learn from him all right so now somebody may ask that oh there are so many great 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 personalities in the mahabharat especially we have the example of bhishma pitama he is the most uh, stalwart personality who is present there there is nobody like him in the entire battlefield yes and lord krishna is personally there he is god himself and then we have personalities like dharmaraj yudhishthir we also have vidur although he was not taking part in the war and then we have personalities like vyas dev we also have personalities like arjuna who was the best friend of lord krishna we have example of bhima was the most powerful warrior strength wise in the battlefield and we also have the example of nakul and sadev and we also have abhimanyu yes all these great personalities are there but why should we learn the lessons from duryodhana he is a so called negative character right yes that is very true but let me tell you the great personalities like bhishma drona yudhishthir and arjuna they will teach us whom to be like should i repeat they will teach us how we should be and the kurus the kauravas headed by duryodhana dushasana shakuni karna vikarna and then so many others in their side bhagadatta yes then we have so many other kings who were on the side of the kurus who were fighting on the side of the evil so they will teach us how and who not to be like should i repeat the kurus will teach us who not to behave like yes and both of these characters are important so that one side teaches us how we should be and the other side teaches us how we should not be all right so we should equally learn the lessons from the kurus not only from the pandavas so yudhishthir maharaj is the perfect example of a person who we should be like yes that is why the mahabharat exclusively coins him as dharmaraj and then there is vidur mahabharat coins the term mahatma to vidur yes 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 vidur is referred as mahatma vidur and bhishma pitama he is one of the 12 mahajans let us quote the shloka from the 12th canto of the shrimad bhagavatam स्वयंभु नारद शंभु कुमारो कपिलो मनु प्रहलादो जनको भीष्म बलिर्वया सखी वयम दिस इज देयर इन द श्रीमद भागवतम दिस इज वन ऑफ द मोस्ट 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 फेमस श्लोक ऑफ द भागवतम वेयर इट टेल्स द नेम ऑफ द ट्वेल्व महाजन सो आई हैव मेड अ वीडियो एक्सक्लूसिवली ऑन द ट्वेल्व महाजन सो यू कैन गो टू माई चैनल एंड टाइप एम ए एच ए जे ए एन एस यू टाइप महाजन्स एंड यू विल फाइंड दैट वीडियो येस so all these great personalities like bhishma pitama they teach us exemplary behavior how not to be deviating from your duty even when there are eluding circumstances yes like bhishma could have got married even though uh, he had taken the vow yes and there were situations which demanded him to get married but he straight he stayed committed and true to his vow yes the bhishma pratigya which he had taken and yudhishthir maharaj although he knew that if he goes to gamble with shakuni he will lose everything he knew it but still he went because it was the order of the great king dhritarashtra <laughs> sarcasm intended here okay so it is 
very important that we learn the good lessons from them and now let's come to duryodhana duryodhana sim simplifies the epitome of evil all right and he is the perfect example of the person of such a person who we should aspire to avoid to be like yes otherwise only if we learn from yudhishthir who we should be like and if we do not learn from duryodhana who we should not be like then it can happen that at times we can end up behaving like duryodhana sometimes yes so basically who does duryodhana represent duryodhana represents envy jealousy should i repeat envy and jealousy these are the two qualities which are totally personified by duryodhana yes now why do i say this because sometimes some things are not meant for us we have to understand yes suppose a man sees a very beautiful girl but she is the wife of another man yes so then we should understand that although i may be obsessed with her physically yes but she can't be mine <laughs> because she is already of somebody else yes so although we may want something or we may like somebody but that doesn't mean that we can have that all the time yes because the situations may not uh, be feasible for that or it may not be ours first of all yes just because we want something doesn't mean that thing is ours right so similarly the kingdom of hastinapur belonged to yudhishthir because yudhishthir's father pandu was the ruler duryodhana's father dhritarashtra was not coronated as the king he was simply a representative of pandu uh, when pandu left this world because of the curse which he had got from kindam rishi and then due to some other circumstances he had to leave his body and then dhritarashtra his elder brother was put on the throne and because of that he was staying like a representative till the time the pandu's uh, eldest son yudhishthir would mature and then yudhishthir would uh, sit in the throne yes that was one reason and the other reason was yudhishthir was also the eldest in the uh, in the entire generation yes that was also another reason the third and the most prominent reason was anybody can write in the comments yes 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 because he was undoubtedly unanimously the most loved and the most deserving candidate to sit in the throne there was nobody like him therefore all these things qualify yudhishthir maharaj to sit in the throne so that means somehow duryodhana is not supposed to sit there yes because he is not the eldest of the family nor is he the son of the king yes dhritarashtra was the uh, person who was acting as a king he was like a representative he was not the king nor was he the favorite of everybody yes nor was he virtuous virtue and duryodhana go well together <laughs> so by any means it was impossible yes for a person like duryodhana to sit in the throne so he should have accepted this and lived under the subordination of yudhishthir maharaj and nothing would have happened yudhishthir maharaj is such a great personality he would have given uh, duryodhana much more than he would have given his own brothers like yudhishthir uh, like arjun bhim nakul and sadev yes because yudhishthir maharaj was very considerate towards everybody else apart from himself <laughs> that's the quality of great souls they do not think about themselves they all, always think about others first yes but duryodhana foolishly under the evil guidance of his mama or his uncle shakuni he along with shakuni dushasana and karana all these four they hatched schemes controversy scandals one after the other after the other after the other after the other to pull the pandavas down and they also tried to kill them yes what are the things that duryodhana did the list is very long i'll try to summarize <laughs> so the first thing which duryodhana did was when the kurus and the pandavas were very young during their childhood then they tried to poison bhima yes when they were just like boys playing in the garden and then what happened bhima was poisoned the duryodhana said to bhima that my dear brother i have brought this kheer for you this sweet rice as in german they say milch rice <laughs> so they uh, gave him milch rice all right but there was poison in it in that so then bhima very innocently because bhima always like love to eat like 
me <laughs> and then bhima uh, took the uh, pot of sweet rice yes and then what happened because there was poison he fell unconscious and then they thought that yes bhima is finally dead and then they took bhima's body and they threw it into the river and then bhima his body went down and then ultimately it reached the nagaloka where the serpents were staying and then uh, not the serpents actually the nagas basically they are higher beings who are uh, looking like serpents and humans yes i'll explain that later in some other video and then what happened the snakes they started uh, hissing and they started biting his body yes bhima's body but then what happened because bhima's body had so much poison and when the snakes started biting him yes then the snakes they died because bhima's body itself was very poisonous and then what happened because they were also poisonous and that poison and this poison inside bhima's body that nullified each other and then bhima regained his consciousness suddenly yes and then bhima went to the uh, to the region of where the nagas are there below 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 the river below the oceans and then he saw that one of his uh, grandfathers from the side of kunti he was living there in the nagloka and then what happened is that person saw oh yes he is my uh, descendant yes and then he said to bhima my dear bhima i am the ancestor of kunti so i am your ancestor also because kunti is the mother of bhima the pandavas and then this person said to bhima that i am so happy to see you so i will give you na gallons of uh, heavenly nectar to drink and then bhima took that heavenly nectar and then he became so strong my god he slept for many days after <laughs> taking that and then when bhima got up he was so powerful my god it appeared that one blow will crack the entire universe and then he took the blessings of his ancestors and then he came out of the river millions of times more stronger than he was before that so this is what happens when you try to pull someone down when we try to bring somebody down from their position from where they deserve to be it always boomerangs <laughs> it always comes back to us yes that is why they say na in hindi that maarne wale se bachane wala bada hota hai which means that if uh, that a person who is a savior is much greater than a person who is a killer yes so that means if you try to kill somebody even if you succeed yes but in the next life times or maybe in this very life that karma will come back to you and that's what happened to duryodhana he met such a terrible end yes when he was dying there was nobody aside him yes and then what duryodhana did he planned this lakshagra when he sent yudhishthir and kunti and all the other brothers the pandavas to varnavrat and then he pretended as if oh my dear uh, brother yudhishthir i have made such a nice uh, place for you to stay and that was made of inflammable materials and then later on by the help of one of his servants whose name was purochan he tried to burn the entire palace of varnavrat and then he almost succeeded but there was one personality who somehow prevented this because he had sensed of this controversy earlier yes this conspiracy was sensed by vidura the great and vidura understood that there is something fishy there <laughs> and then he planned in such a way that uh, duryodhana's efforts were in trash duryodhana's all efforts went in vain and finally just before purochan wanted to uh, put fire into the palace the pandavas evaded that palace and through underground passage they came out and then they survived by the grace of lord krishna and by the skill tactical maneuvers of the great vidur yes so this is how they survived so again we see here duryodhana tried to to conspiracy and kill them but pandavas survived <laughs> so how much ever you try to do wrong it will never benefit you yes then what did he do then next he saw that oh now i cannot defeat the pandavas because they had uh, uh, taken uh, they, they they were allotted the kingdom of indraprastha which was 
which was actually a deceitful act by Dhritarashtra because there was nothing in Khandav Prast. It was completely barren and then Yudhishthir Maharaj along with Krishna and Balaam they turned it to Indra Prast who, which, was more, which was the most prosperous, the most abundant, the best place to live on planet earth during that time. And then Yudhishthir was doing this Raja Suya Yagya by which he became the un undisputed emperor of the entire world. Everybody surrendered to him and some of them who did not surrender, they were defeated in battle by Arjuna, Bhim, Nakul and Sadev and they were subdued and then Bhima personally had killed Jarasand and that is how this Rajasuya Yagya which means he was the undisputed emperor of the entire earth that took place and Yudhishthir Maharaj became the Chakravarti Samrat which means the undisputed emperor of entire India during that time. Now, Duryodhana could not digest this. Oh my God! How can you this tear do that? <laughs> yeah, again, I will pull him down. I will do everything that will give him humiliation. And then Duryodhana was very angry. He was thinking what to do. And then Shakuni hatched this evil uh, gambling match where he invited Yudhishthir Maharaj. Yes, and then they uh, did this magic in the uh, what you say that chaucer passe <laughs> that that dice which you throw in the gambling match you know? and in that there was specific mantras and that that was fully programmed if you say it in today's language it was pre-programmed that whatever shakuni wants the number is it one two or three or four or five or six i don't know much about dice so i can't comment here much uh, that number which shakuni wanted that will only come so every uh, time yudhishthir would play yudhishthir would lose and then what happened Yudhishthir lost everybody and then he lost uh, his entire kingdom, his all his wealth and then Shakuni asked, so now what do you do? Then he said, I put Nakul into stake and then he lost Nakul also, then Sadev, then he said, I put Arjuna into stake, then he put Bhima and then he put himself into stake, yes. And then when Yudhishthir lost himself also, then Yudhishthir said, that's it, I have lost everything, I have lost myself also, there is nothing that I can put in stake now. So the gambling match is over and we have lost everything. That is it. End of the match. So then Duryodhana's best friend, his most cherished companion, Karna, he stood up and said, My dear great king Yudhishthir. <laughs> he was being sarcastic here because Yudhishthir was reduced to a penniless pauper now. But he was still using sarcasm and he said to Yudhishthir, My dear great king Yudhishthir, how do you say that you have become a pauper? You have uh, your beautiful queen Draupadi, yes. Why don't you put her in stake? And then everybody started roaring when they heard this. It was it was very disgusting to hear that Karna suggests that you put uh, your wife into stake. And then Shakuni knew that Yudhishthir would never do it. So then what this Shakuni, this evil Shakuni, what he, what he did is, see this is how uh, they provoked Yudhishthir. Okay. So they said to Yudhishthir, oh, it seems Yudhishthir Maharaj only likes uh, he is very much attached to his wife. That is why he does not put her into stake. But he does not love his brothers. That is why you see how he has put Arjuna and uh, Bhim into in, into uh, the uh, stakes also. Yes. When Yudhishthir heard this, he became so angry. He said, you, you thief, you want to create enmity between us? Yes, go. I put Draupadi also into the stake. And then as usual, he lost her also. And then... Draupadi was summoned to the assembly. Draupadi did not come. Duryodhana sent Pratikamin, one of his servants, to call her. And then she said to Pratikamin that I am in my menstrual period now. I cannot come. I am not in a situation to come now. So please tell Duryodhana that this cannot happen. And then Pratikamin went back to the assembly and said that she is telling she can't come. She is not in a right situation. And it is not proper for a woman to come to the assembly like that. And then Duryodhana told Dushasan that, my dear Dushasan, go and bring this Draupadi here. Na? If she doesn't listen to you, if she doesn't come, then what you do? You catch her hair and you drag her mercilessly here. Na? Like that you bring her by hook or by crook. And then Dushasan goes and he says to Draupadi that either you come or I am going to pull you. And then Draupadi said, no, I am not coming. And then Dushasan caught her hair and by that he dragged her to the assembly yes and this was the most horrifying instance in the entire Mahabharata yes and then uh, 
Duryodhana said that. Uh, so, my dear Draupadi, I have won you now. Yes. So now you are my slave. You will do whatever I say. So, Dushasana. Yes. Please undress this girl. And then there was a roar in the assembly that, oh, how can you undress a woman naked like this in the assembly? And then uh, Vikarna was one of the brother of Duryodhana. Yes, Vikarna said, that, oh, this is not proper. Even though she is your slave, but that doesn't mean you humiliate her like this in the assembly publicly in front of everybody. Yes, that's horrendous to do like that. And then again, Karna's best friend, uh, Duryodhana's best friend, Karna, he stood up and he silenced Vikarna and he said that, oh, anyways, this uh, this Draupadi, she has five husbands. He said, a woman who has uh, five husbands, she is a prostitute. Yes, she is unchaste. And Pandavas heard this. And then Karna also said that, anyways, Draupadi, you anyways have five husbands. What is the problem if you have another husband, right? So you can take Duryodhana as your husband also for, for the time being, basically, not for eternity. But if Duryodhana wants to have fun with you, what's the problem, right? Because anyways, you have five husbands. So as in Hindi, they say, na, paanch ke jaga, che ho gaya, to kya farak padega? So this is, this is what uh, Duryodhana's best friend said, yes? And then Karna also said, oh, anyways, she's like a prostitute. Either a prostitute has clothes in her body or she doesn't have, how does it matter, yes? So, the lesson which Duryodhana is trying to teach us is here is, be very, 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 very careful in choosing your friends. <laughs> if you have friends like this, yes, who incite you to do wrong things all the time, who incite you in your hellish propagandas which you have, then you will also land up where Duryodhana landed, yes. And then also be careful to whom you listen because Duryodhana's biggest problem was he only listened to what Karna, Shakuni and Dushasana, only these three people. And that is why Bhishma chastises him again and again and again. If only he would have listened to Lord Krishna, to Bhishma Pitama and to Vidur, these three great personalities, he would have not had such a terrible end which he had, yes. But his problem was he only listened to these three people. He primarily listened to Shakuni, his wicked uncle and he listened to what Karna said and he also listened to what Dushasan said, yes. And then because of this he completely perished. So, the lesson which Duryodhana wants us to teach here is, be very careful in whom you uh, take your opinion from, yes, because the word opinion comes from the uh, word op, which means opening of the pineal gland, which is where your highest level of energy is concentrated in the pineal gland, yes. So, uh, basically one who is not spiritually elevated, you are not supposed to hear their opinions or take their instruction seriously, yes. Example of personalities like Karana, Shakuni and Dushasana. See, they are giving you this kind of advice that go and strip this woman naked. See, that is the level of advice his so-called advisors are giving. So, uh, you should never stay with such people. And in, in the mundane society, in the materialistic society, in our friend circle, we also have so many people who will say, oh, you are drinking. No problem, you drink, no problem. And eh, nothing happens. As in Hindi, they say, na, Ek bar pine se kuch nahi hota hai. <laughs> if you drink once, nothing is going to happen, man. But every addict also started drinking once only. So, if you drink once, that's it. When you are depressed due to some reason or the other, you will again land up drinking. And this is how you fall into addiction. Yes. And this is how your life becomes miserable. Lord Krishna says, Mana shashthani indriyani prakriti sthani karshati. That materialistic life becomes very, very, very hard. The person is working, foaming in his mouth because he has all these desires and addictions, yes, which is driving him mad, which is tormenting him 24 hours. So if we stay with these people, these friends, yes, it can be anybody. It can be our relatives also. Shakuni was his relative. Karna was his friend. So be very, very, very careful. In those people, in associating with those people who say, Chalta hai, it's okay. 
आजकल सब करते हैं दीज डेज एवरीबॉडी डज दिस ओके इट्स नॉट अ बिग डील टू डू दिस येस सो इफ वी हैव पीपल अराउंड अस हु कीप सेंग अस लाइक दैट वेल देन इट्स probably time to say bye bye to them bye bye does not mean that you go and slap them in their face or you go and delete their number it simply means that we cut off connections with them we do not share our uh, heart with them yes cut off doesn't mean you uh, go and uh, s- start not talking with that person you stop talking entirely but it means that maintain distance and only contact them when it is required yes and on the other side we should always take advice from enlightened personalities like bhishma like lord krishna and vidura especially yes and those personalities who can give us good guidance who are spiritually elevated the sadhus the saints yes that is why in uh, sanskrit this word is there satsang which means divine association we should go and take advice from holy people yes either you are a hindu or a muslim or a christian it doesn't matter you can always go to your tradition and find holy people and from them you can take advice their suggestions their guidance and then by that you can receive enlightenment yes and the last thing which duryodhana wants everybody to uh, know that is if you try to force things it doesn't work <laughs> see duryodhana from the beginning the only thing he is doing is he is trying to force things which cannot happen so we have to understand that everything that we want cannot happen yes so duryodhana wanted to sit in the throne but that was not his place so he should have given up this desire so sometimes we also have to understand that we want something to go our way but it may not go so if we realize that it is not going then maybe it's time to give up yes and this does not mean that you are opening a company and that's not going very good or you are opening a youtube channel you are not getting subscribers then you stop doing it no i am not saying that i am not saying that you give up but some things which are not meant for us we may have to give them up yes i give the example in the beginning that if you fall in love with somebody who is the husband or wife of somebody else then you you have to understand that although i love this person but he or she can never be mine because uh, he or she is already belonging to somebody else yes so basically duryodhana wants us to know that we should be very careful when we choose those people with whom we stay because they say you are the average of five personalities with whom you stay should i repeat you are the average of five people with whom you stay so if duryodhana would have stayed with the five pandavas yes see exact five it is <laughs> then he would have also got the counsel of lord krishna of bhishma pitama of vidura of dronachari yes and duryodhana was supremely arrogant adamant very egoistic and i have made a video on this uh, playlist or i don't know in the mahabharat playlist epic funny story so you can type in my channel funny story so there's the story of yudhishthir and um, duryodhana and once dronachari had asked them so you can search funny story and you will find that okay so please uh, see that video you will love to see that video and duryodhana was so egoistic he was so much arrogant and he never liked to listen good things this is one very big problem which we also face sometimes when sadhus when scriptures and uh, great personalities they will warn us repeatedly don't do this ye mat karo pachtaoge <laughs> then what do we say oh these are just old people bluffing they are uh, they, they 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 don't let us enjoy so if you enjoy sinfully by doing wrong things then later on you suffer yes that's what happens to people parents warn them that don't stay with this person he or she will spoil you but then you don't listen and then you continue staying with that person and ultimately what happens that person takes you into wrong habits yes it can be anything all right so that is it from my side so it is very important that we learn the lessons which duryodhana wants us to learn okay and then we protect ourselves by knowing how we should not be like and there are many things which duryodhana did wrong i can go on and on and on and on and on saying and the biggest blunder which he did was he ignored lord krishna's advice again and again and again and again lord krishna tried to advise him vidura's advice drona's advice bhishma's advice so if we keep ignoring the advice of the scriptures and the great personalities like the sadhus and saints and enlightened beings then one day maybe our situation is also like duryodhana and we know how what a miserable death he met yes bima ripped off his thigh even though he 
had a boon from Gandhari that no part of his body uh, would be uh, destroyed except that thigh because he was covering that part. And then Lord Krishna told Bhima that you hit him in his thigh. Yes, because Lord Krishna knew that this person does not deserve the death of a Kshatriya. Kill him by wrong means. Yes. And that's what Lord Krishna did. And Lord Krishna did not give Duryodhana the death, the honor of a Kshatriya. Yes. He was killed mercilessly, not like a valiant warrior who dies in a battlefield triumphantly giving his life away. Alright, so Lord Krishna is telling him and everybody else that if you try to cheat those people who love me like the Pandavas, I will also cheat you. <laughs> so we should not try to persecute those people who are going ahead in their spiritual journey. It's a very big crime, yes. So you may be a mother who is watching this or you may be anybody and your friend may be doing some spiritual practice pertaining to any god or any demigod and it is our duty that at least if we cannot help them we should not try to be an obstacle in their path yes because they say if you cannot be a part of the solution at least don't be a part of the problem yes so that is what Duryodhana uh, wants to tell us all right so that is it from my side if you are new to the channel then please subscribe to it and if you want a consultation then please approach me and if you like this video click the thumbs up and share it share it with those people who want to know how you should not be like okay so these are the lessons which Duryodhana wants us to know and tomorrow's video I don't know on whom I make maybe on Bhishma this time okay or on Arjuna whoever whatever my mind says okay until next time wish you good luck in learning from Duryodhana of who you should not be like okay until next time wish you good luck bye bye